Uh, Joey Bosa was defensive player of the game. Mike Bennett graded a champion. That's all we had on defense, on offense. Marcus Hall was a champion. Andrew Norwell graded out as a champion. Uh, Jeff Hireman at tight end. And three receivers again, Evan Spencer, Devin Smith, and Philly Brown. Player of the week was Carlos Hyde. Uh, Brad Roby was special teams player of the week. And I think we had some uh, all-conference awards with those guys. Uh, we had a bye week. Um, we, I think we managed it well. Once again, that's you evaluate. I evaluate that every year on how we do after bye weeks. And uh, we gave them, gave them some rest. Uh, six tough games, back-to-back -back, uh, night games, back-to-back -back, uh, primetime games against uh, ranked opponents. Uh, and I told them we'd take care of them if they won, and they did a good job. So now the issue is we went Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday last week. Uh, they were in at 6 a, uh, 7 a.m. this morning for meetings. And we go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week in pads. Uh, so that's our plan. And a very good Iowa defense. You know, I just because I don't know a whole thought, lot about Iowa other than I did coach against them in a bowl game a while back. And they're the same as they've always been on defense. Real stout, real firm against the run. I believe they've not given up a rushing touchdown. I don't know. Is that, I think I read that somewhere. I can see it, that they're, they're very good. So uh, uh, just a big game. Questions, Middle, Dave. Dave, Biddle, Bucknuts. Uh, Urban, you've never had a running back go over a thousand yards, but Carlos was real close last year. And, and what of if he didn't miss three games? Tired of hearing that, man. I know, I know you are. Um, and looks like he's on pace this year as well, despite missing three games. Is, is that it? a change in philosophy? Is um, he? I don't even know. Yeah, look if you guys play, especially a good Big Ten championship game plus the bowl game, um, is it a change in philosophy at all from earlier in your, in your coaching days? Are you no, more of a running coach no, now? No, I've always. You tell we had, I think, one with 970, the next one 890. And then we had one here, 970, and Jeff Demps was going to be that guy down there, and he gets hurt, and he misses five. You know, it's nuts. So if someone wants to question whether we run the ball effectively, I think we fairly do, you know, over, was it 12 years, uh, you know, we, we run the ball really well. But I'm just in recruiting and all that other nonsense. You never had a, you know, I can't, and we can't anticipate guys missing games for whatever reasons, so. Average per carry, I'd like to think we're always in the tops, you know, certainly in the conference on average per carry. So, so thanks for bringing that up today. <laughs> and you've had quarterbacks go over a thousand. Some guys just like leave their press conferences. I might start doing that when I get back. And you've had quarterbacks go over a thousand yards. Is it safe to say? I mean, you just adjust to your quarterback. Personnel. I don't think we've had more than one. Just one. Just mm -hmm. Braxton's the only one. Yeah. And so you adjust to your personnel. Is that the best way to? Classifiers. Absolutely. I think uh, I think that's something if we have uh, with I love having I at Utah I had two big backs in Florida never really uh, first uh, 05 and 06 we did a kid named Deshaun Wynn who uh, once again missed five games or else he would have been a thousand yard rusher and uh, I, I think you, you, you there's no doubt I love having big backs it's finding them and making sure that they're powerful fast guys and we got one uh, Carlos. Uh, Frank Rowe, Bill. Over dispatch. Halfway through the regular season, just what's your sense of where this team is as far as where, what your expectations are, what's left ahead of it? Well, I think we all learned. I mean, every week, this is the first chance I had to watch football this weekend. I watched some volleyball, but I did watch some football as well. And, uh, uh, I mean, that, those are... I, I, we got to find a way to win this Saturday, and it's not easy. I mean, for, we've been in here for two weeks trying to figure out how to run the ball against this defense, and you know they're they're top ten in scoring defense, or I think twelfth and top ten in rushing defense, and very good players and all that. So, I think I think water cooler talk and good conversation is where are you? How's it going? What's the future look like? Wait a minute, we're just trying to get. We have a really good practice today, and some people laugh when I say that stuff, but that's. The mindset is that I like this team. I really, I really do. They're good people. They're they're guys that um, play hard. I love the fact that the the emotion that I see in the locker room at times and very relatively minor minor issues I'm dealing with. It's I really like this team. Where are we? I don't know. I, I, we're six and zero and doing the best we can to uh, get first downs and stop people. And um, I can feel sometimes pressure mounting on players when you streak, you start hearing about streaks, you start hearing about this, you start hearing about that. And it's my job as a coach and our coaching staff is it's all about today. And, you know, I just, there's some teams that do an incredible job of that. I think Oregon does an incredible job of just this tight end got in trouble and left or something and with next guy up, go play. That's, he's gone. And I think that's every coach's focus is somehow just get to the next day. 
You, were, you spoke so glowingly about last year's seniors and their uh -huh. leadership. How is this team's leadership better? Now? It's uh, I was pan panicky uh, going into the season because I thought it was, it was poor. It was certainly poor in the spring. And obviously, when you have issues like we had in the summer, then that questions on leadership of the team. And uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm not I, I'm not saying it's great yet because they're still only halfway home. But uh, through the first half of the season, they've done a very nice job. There, there's good chemistry, good alignment, and good leadership right now. Third row right, David. David Wilson, TV. You're 21 and two in your career, coming off buys. It's obviously been very successful. But is there anything you can pinpoint to why that success has happened? I think I've have been very blessed to have really good assistant coaches, and are you know I think we manage it well. I think that's where my strength coach is very involved, where I always uh, seek uh, guidance on how our team is doing. You know, if there's not some rigid program that we have. I always go back and I take our I go 08, and then the most recent schedules, and I go right off of those two, and I pick and I meet with our strength coach. So I I, I think we just very carefully manage everything. Bye weeks? Not really. Front row right. Austin? <coughs> Austin For me, you, you said you watched some games on Saturday. How much football did you see? Who did you see? And as a coach, do you start at this point when you do have a bye, thinking about where you stack up nationally as you sit there on Saturdays? Well, I, I, I try not to, but the human element gets involved and you start like watching some of these teams. And uh, I watched, uh, you know, Penn State's game. I watched. Uh, uh, that was really where I really, because I was uh, wanted to see my daughter play volleyball, but I got on my iPad. I started watching it and watching it pretty close. That's really the only one I watched start to finish, but I saw the highlights. And you start wondering where you stack up, and then I try to click right back into don't worry about that. Just take care of your own business. So that's where we're at. When, uh, when Ryan Shazier came up with the idea to switch to wear number two a couple weeks ago, uh, did he come to you? How does that work, and what does that mean? Ryan's got the—he's one of the most incredible young men I've ever been around. He's got a heart of gold. You know, Curtis Grant lost his father, so uh, that was an issue we, we were dealing with over the weekend. And you know, prayers are out to Curtis and his family, and just a tough situation. And you know, Ryan wants to go drive, fly down there, and drive down there and be with him and all that. And so Ryan—he's one of the most incredible young men I've ever been around. It's obviously. He's raised that way too. He's got a really wonderful family. So when Ryan comes to me like that, I'm always like, okay, settle down now. Why do we want to do this? Best thing to do. And then how does it affect our numbers and all those things? So Ryan's got, that's one of about 50 ideas he always comes up with. But he's, it's all pure, you know, and it's pure ideas and uh, caring in his purest form, which is kind of cool. Front row left, Rusty. Uh situation how's Jordan Hall in particular and Tommy Shutt? Jordan, uh, Tommy Shutt's a go. Uh, we're going to get him into some reps today um, and he is a very welcome back player. Uh, he, would a guy, he was a guy that was, uh, he might not have had the title of a starter, but he was a starter for us and went down in training camp and has worked his tail off. Um, Coach Marotti says he's one of the best he's ever had as far as taking care of his business and getting ready. So he should be a go Saturday and then Jordan Hall is going to practice some today is what I've heard. You mentioned Todd Porter for the Canton Repository. You mentioned last week, most like you're trying to get Dontre Wilson to kind of push through. I don't know if it's a freshman hunt, but you want more from him. Where are you guys at with that in the bye week? Did you come up with anything? And then two, how much is how much of that relates to the whole team too, sort of pushing through you know, this middle of the season and, and pushing on for the stretch run? Well, Dontre is a valuable guy. It's problem is he's a he's a. Um, what am I looking for? He's a novelty right now as opposed to a full-time player. Full-time players have to go block Sam linebackers and those kind of things, and we're not quite ready to – but we're working at it. And But there's other ways that we're, we can be creative in getting him involved and not necessarily say, by the way, when he's in, we're handing the ball in a stretch play or running a wheel route. That's kind of what he's been doing. So we're working hard because he deserves to play. works hard. He's just – you know, this time next year, he's going to be a rocked up, you know, 350-pound benching guy, we hope. So uh, – that's what he's not yet. So there's a blocking and, you know, Kenny running inside zone. Sure, is he great at it? Probably not because he's not big and strong enough yet. So those are the areas that, you know, everybody uses that Percy Harvin term that, you know, Percy was a 400-pound benching guy that when he blocked you, he blocked you. So that's where we have to get with him. And, and to answer your question, we did work really hard on that last week and it's still in progress. Front row, Lori. 
coach, Lori Schmidt, 97.1 The Fan. I know punt return coverage is something you've been very proud of this year. This week you go up against the players statistically best in the nation in punt return. I'm, I'm wondering what has made Martin Manley successful there? We had two big hits against Western Michigan. Uh, a lot of fair catches. They, uh, uh, I just think he's a very good player, you know. And, and uh, I think was he hurt? I want to say that he might. We might be dealing with an injury there too. We're just trying to get some feedback because I do believe he's an excellent punt returner. Uh, but they, they, they are a hold-up team, and so not to get too much detail, but you asked is they, they, they drop people back and they get some double teams on your guys running down the field. So there's two ways of returning punts. We don't do it. We come after people. We give the appearance we're coming after people and then lock on. They don't do that. They drop back and try to get double teams. So it's a very good scheme, but it's a return scheme. Does that make sense? Yeah. And a very good player. Don't be afraid of too much detail. <laughs> um, I'm wondering too, You've talked about how your best teams play like they've had something taken from them. Mm -hmm. Does this team have that chip on their shoulder? I think so. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like to use that a little bit, and they respond very well. And, and uh, uh, that's a great question. And at, to this point, I, I saw a little bit of a drop off at Northwestern in the preparation uh, going up to Wisconsin. The Wisconsin game, I mean, it was the entire week felt like rivalry week, and it was really, and I didn't feel that. It was might have been fatigue a little bit. Um, but uh, th this team at times really plays like that, and they're easy to motivate. Front row, Tim. Yeah, Herbert, three th quick things. Before you click back uh, on Saturday, how did you feel like your team stacked up with the, with the teams you were seeing? <laughs> uh, I think we're right there. I think we're a good team. I do. I think we, we're not an explosive. You know, some of these teams are real explosive teams. But, you know, I saw Clemson, who I watched Clemson very closely, and they, you know, every once in a while you – you play football against a very well-prepared team, and they kind of take away some explosiveness, and that's what happens. It's not necessarily what they did. Clemson did wrong. It's what Boston College did right, and we run into the same thing. It's, you know, they have scholarships too, very good players, well-coached teams. So I just that, that's something I just I want to be, you know, if I, had, if I had the greatest, we're not explosive from first to fourth quarter. Uh. Braxton Miller, what did y'all address with him from the standpoint of hanging on to the ball and stuff last week? Do you think you got the message across? I mean, yeah. obviously it was only a couple of times, but they can be huge. Huge, and and, and uh, it wasn't a couple of times. It was a couple of times it showed up, but we saw before that too. I mean, so we just, uh, like anything with any player, you just work on it and make it clear this is what we expect. He's a smart guy. And uh, then defensively, pass defense was alarming going into last week, as you said, coming out. Uh, what have y'all addressed specifically with those guys? Because uh, clearly, you know, the pass rush seems to be getting better. I don't know if it is or not. Uh, just what would y'all address, I guess, over that? I think it's the underneath coverage as well as the, there's a couple uh, um, glaring ones, and that was, you know, we, we I watched some of those Wisconsin game, and I told our staff this morning, we had a staff, and I said, you know what, you did, a, our defense staff did a wonderful job stopping that run game. Because I don't know, I mean, I watch him play, and and Northwestern's got a fine team, and they ran all over them. Um, so we, we, we really spend a lot of energy and focus on the run game and stopping the run game. And my challenge to them is without sacrificing that, how do we get that same energy and, and focus in the stopping the pass game? And last week we did a, several things. We're going to continue the, this week. Far left, Matt. Uh, Matt McCoy, WTV. You mentioned last week on the teleconference, somebody asked you about you know, still maybe playing Kenny some in games. How much do you still, is that still on the table? Do you still sure, think it is, that? and just because of who Kenny is and how, he, you know, we have a starter and we have a backup. Uh, the backup is very productive here and, and could start at a lot of places. Uh, two years ago, he could not, so it's not, I, I keep bringing that up. Kenny's worked himself into that situation. Quarterback's a very complicated position, you know, especially, you know, uh, you know, how, how and when do you pull him out, when do you put him back in, those type of things. So I think it's uh, he's on call, ready to go. Uh, the wonderful thing is that I don't have, you know, Uncle Kenny coming in to see me all the time, asking me why not playing, you know, someone. So a lot of respect for Kenny and his family, the way he's handling our situation. Are we handling it right? That's, I don't know. I mean, that's, I'm sure we'll be judged on that every week. When you mentioned complicated, is any part of it, um, like Braxton's not used to getting taken out. I, I don't mean that. I mean, he's, he's never had that. Yeah, that any quarterback's not. 
name a quarterback that is, you know, and I had to deal with that at, at Florida with Tim and, and Chris, but they were so different. One was a short yardage, one was a, a unique curveball. Uh, if you have two guys, you know, when you put them back in the game, and that's, and I've, I don't know if I've ever seen it in college football. Two more. Uh, middle, Jared. Jared Small, NBC4. Uh, another Braxton related question. How did you manage him during the, the off week? Uh, maybe less reps in practice, anything like that, just to further him along in the healing process, or do you feel like he's pretty much good to go? Any, any Braxton? Yeah, in terms no, of he's a, healing yeah. like the knee. Yeah, it, no, he's good. No, he's 100 percent, and it was took took as many reps and 100 percent ready to go. Front row, Steve. I, I apologize for interrupting. I just wanted to clarify on Curtis Green. I know, obviously, you've said very difficult situation. Is there any inclination as you sit here today? Will he be back this week? Is he hoping to play? Is oh yeah, yeah, he'll play. Um, okay. I don't want to give you too much information because I might it's be wrong. Early, yeah. Yeah, it might be wrong. Uh, but I know Curtis lost his family, lost his father. And uh, we're behind him 100%, like any player. Thanks, guys.